Hello and welcome. My name is Stacey Williams and I'm the caseworker at Waterford Youth Assistance. Uh, WYA mission is to strengthen families and youth and reduce incidents of juvenile delinquency, child abuse, and child neglect through community involvement. WYA's Family and Youth Education Committee is excited to announce their series of short educational videos for parents and youth to learn about a variety of topics impacting the Waterford community. Next, I would like to introduce Tracy Ross, our Family and Youth Chairperson. Thanks, Stacey. Um, hello, my name is Tracy Ross, and today I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Lisa Kaplan, who will be providing a short educational video on nitrous oxide toxicity, otherwise known as whippets. Uh, Lisa has been in the addiction field for 26 years, having worked at CARE of Southeastern Michigan as a clinician and as a program coordinator in the prevention department. She currently runs the community education department and serves as part of the clinical treatment team at Henry Ford Health Systems Maple Grove Center in West Bloomfield. Thanks for being here today, Lisa. I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you for inviting me. I would like to say that um, we are doing a series of different drugs to educate families. And today we're talking about whippets. And this is what they look like, okay? These are red, but they come in other colors. The most common color is silver. And parents, you may remember from back in the day when you were a kid that, that you would see these lying around on playgrounds or in public places, and that happened all the time. But it seems like whippets are making a comeback now. Um, like any drug, sometimes you know they, they come and they go. And like any other drug, they have different names. So some people call them nitrous oxide bulbs, laughing gas, hippie crack. The names are also geographical. So depending on where you live in the country, you're gonna hear different names. So what happens is in anything that's a spray can, so let's use whipped cream as an example. There's, you push down to let the whipped cream spritz out. So what happens is there's a propellant in there that makes it come out and that's nitrous oxide, okay? And that's what's, whoops, in these. Okay, so whippets are the container, nitrous oxide is the content inside the container, okay? So nitrous oxide is a colorless gas that has somewhat of a sweet odor, okay? And it was introduced medically in 1844 um, as a pain reliever as an anesthetic and it reduces reduced pain, it calmed patients. And in the medical field, um, it was used to make patients feel more comfortable. And of course, we all know that it's used by dentists. We all go to dentists and um, it is very safe to use when it's prescribed by a dentist, okay? Because they are there to, they're trained in administering it and they're there to monitor you closely and it's short acting so that when you're done with the dental procedure, um, the drug wears off, okay? But when people use it for non-medical purposes, it can be very dangerous. So um, the word laughing gas, that's what we call the kind that the dentists use. But it also has been used to help women in childbirth and to deal with labor pains and treat um, any kind of traumatic injury and emergencies. So when people are using it for recreational purposes and it seems to be making us come back. It is very, very dangerous. And the problem is that teens do not often recognize the dangers of recreational use. So it's easy for people to acquire if they're over 18, they're legal and teens feel comfortable using them. But that doesn't mean it's safe. So they can get them at party stores, gas stations, head shops, um, you can even order them on the internet and have them delivered to your front door or better yet your, your friend's front door because if your parents are onto you, your friend's parents may not be onto them. So just be aware of that. So what happens when people use this? It, it produces a rapid, short lasting high and therefore it encourages teens to do it again and again because it doesn't last very long. So if they continue to use nitrous oxide at higher concentrations, it can be life-threatening because what happens is the brain is deprived of oxygen. And 
So for example, if someone uses whippets with a bag over their head or nitrous oxide tanks with a face mask or in an enclosed space like a car, it can, re it can result in um, irreversible brain damage or even death. And this is from what we call nitrous oxide toxicity. It's like overdosing on nitrous oxide. So what happens is actually people become asphyxiated or they suffocate. But even if you don't use it to the point of that, even minimal use can, can create seizures, irregular heart rhythm, trauma, loss of lung or heart functioning that may be fatal, and it can create nerve damage that can be permanent. So why would kids use these? Well, for one, it can't be tested. Someone who knows that their parents are testing them for drug use, or if someone's on probation and they're being tested, you can't test for this. So they can get away with it, okay? Another thing is, um, it seems to be socially accepted because it's out in the public, it's in our products. So kids will use them thinking that it's safe. So what about a teen who doesn't know how to use it? How do they find out? Well, they can learn from their friends or they can Google it. And as sad as this may sound, on Wikipedia, it tells you what to do. So I'm gonna read you this from Wikipedia. A whipped cream charger is a steel cylinder or cartridge filled with nitrous oxide that is used as a whipping agent in a whipped cream dispenser. The narrow end of a charger has a foil covering which is broken to release the gas. This is usually done by a sharp pin inside the whipped cream dispenser. So you can go online and you can learn exactly how to do this. Just like you can learn anything, how to inject a drug, how to you know, harm yourself in certain ways. Teens can Google this and find out. So it's pretty wise if parents were to check the history on a computer to see what are their kids looking up. Okay, so what should parents look for in a home? Well, you wanna look for empty containers of aerosol products, okay? Once the, the, the nitrous oxide is gone, it's not useful to them. So if you're finding things in the garbage can that you know you didn't use up, that's a real red flag. Okay, if you find odd smelling balloons lying around, okay, it's a popular receptacle for nitrous oxide. So they're commonly found in the homes of people who use whippets. So you wanna check your garbage cans. You wanna check under your teen's bed and in their bedroom. Um, parents, just like teens can research how to do drugs or how to do any type of dangerous behavior, so can parents. So parents, can also look for signs and symptoms of substance use and Google it and learn about it so that they're aware of what to look for. And this is even if you do not suspect your child of having a problem, it's a good idea for you to just be educated. So what happens if a person is, becomes addicted to use of nitrous oxide? And this can happen. It's not that common, but it can happen. So there's therapy, there's different types of treatment and um, behavior therapy is the most helpful. But medically, their bodies need help. So what they do is they treat it by taking a B12 supplement, which can minimize the symptoms while the body is recovering. Um, and the symptoms that they might experience could be weakness and balance problems, numbness and tingling, memory problems, mood changes, paranoia, delusions, so treatment programs like Henry Ford Maple Grove Center can help, but people can get help also on an outpatient basis. And of course, whether a person has insurance or not, it's not relevant. There's help for anybody. Um, even if you're indigent or on Medicaid, the county has funding available to help a person get treatment. So people who are interested in learning more about whippets can go to NIDA, it's a great site, N-I-D-A, National Institute on Drug Abuse for Teens, and you can get drug facts and facts on inhalants. Um, there's, there's information, there's videos, there's games, blogs, posts, and much more. So it's very attractive to teens, but parents can also benefit from that too. Okay, so um, I wanna leave you with this, it is not harmless.
Um, it is more prevalent in our society, although I did have a conversation with a Waterford police officer who said that it's not rampant. He said they are aware of some, um, some kids using and they're finding it in local places, but it's not a rampant problem yet. But it's a good idea for parents to be aware before it becomes more and more popular. So thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Lisa, for your presentation. It was a quick introduction to a subject that requires much more time. We hope the information was helpful for you. For more information on our upcoming video series, please visit our website at www.waterfordyouthassistance.com. Thank you.